Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back doing our day two recap. Sorry, um, it's getting out late and I'm doing it late. As you can see, it's 7.40 at night. Um, I just had some different stuff. My cousin, um, my two cousins are like my sisters, uh, two of them. I have a bunch of cousins that are all, pre we're all pretty close, but these two in particular are like sisters. So when they come home, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta spend time with them. So that's what I've been doing pretty much all day while watching basketball. Um, when I started the day, I was at 51%. Now I'm at 87. I'm at the top 87%, uh, mostly because I am uh, three for three on the day. But uh, that, that that doesn't matter. The Iowa State Arkansas Little Rock game is on currently, um, and I'll get on to this whole Indiana win uh, in the next in next tomorrow's video. Uh, had plenty of Kentucky fans telling me that I was stupid, uh, and uh, you know, look, 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 look at that. Look, just look at that. Look who's in the Sweet 16. All right, but let's let's get into this. Day two, uh, 16 more games played. Ugly as all hell for me. It, it, it couldn't have gotten much worse. Uh, look at this stupid Midwest bracket. It's embarrassing. I got Virginia, Iowa State, and Syracuse. Correct. There's not much I can say about that. Green Bay played really well for like 15 minutes, and then they kind of fell apart, so that didn't go well. And what is this, ESPN? What is this? 57-42, to 42, Arkansas Little Rock. It is 59-42, Iowa State. You lazy SOBs. Hold on, I need to pull up on my phone, sorry. I'm going to pull up on my phone and make sure I do the right games and I talk about the right games. Um... Uh, just just because there were 16 games yesterday, and I can't promise you I remember what all of them were. Let's go ahead. Friday. Okay. You know what? I'll, I'll just leave this up um, on my national championship, which I still have three of my four or final four teams in both of my national championships. For as bad as I believe my bracket is, I don't think it's that good. How I'm in the top, like, 87, like, how I, I'm 87, what is it? Would it be the, is it the 13th percentile? Is that what? Don't you do the opposite for percentile? I don't even know. My bracket is better than 87% because I'm 87.1. So it's better than 87% of brackets, which is mind-blowing to me because I didn't really think my bracket was that good. Um, but I do still have a lot of points left to be gained, so that's good. Okay, so let's start this off. We've got Syracuse Dayton in the first game. Malachi Richardson was really the difference in that game. Um, Benege was good. Uh, but Richardson, uh, he nailed some really big threes uh, when Dayton was trying to push back in. Now, Dayton didn't play a great game, I will say that. Um, but Syracuse uh, played a very good game. Weren't supposed to be in the tournament. I, I hate when people were, are like, who teams that shouldn't have been in the tournament, and then they win, and people that that somehow justifies it. That, that, that doesn't really justify it. It really has nothing to do with what they do in the tournament. It was, it's what they did after, and Dayton chucked up a bunch of bricks yesterday, just like they chucked up a bunch of bricks the last time I saw them. I told you guys that, that they, they chuck up some bricks, and it, it's just, it's just kind of rough. You gotta, you gotta, um, kind of make those shots. They had some wide open shots that they just could not get down, but they, they shot some bricks in their last game out, and they shot some bricks yesterday. Uh, but that's about all I gotta say about that. Richardson, Malachi Richardson was was really good. Um, he was a beast yesterday, freshman. Won't be going pro, so Syracuse will be very good next year with Malachi Richardson and whoever else Bayheim can bring in. It should be interesting next year. Uh, Villanova, UNC, a Asheville. Um, you know, I, I had my worries about Villanova, and they, they didn't play well for the first bit. Uh, it, it really was a third. It was an 11-point game. Archie Diakno hit the, the kind of fadeaway three to end the half to make it a 14 point lead uh, but they played much better in the second half uh, increased that lead and played a little bit better defense coming out with a 30 point win and if you think about it out of all the two seeds they looked the best uh they looked really good yesterday um that they never it was in doubt for about the first 10 minutes it was a real nice close game um and, and then they started to pull away but that's about all i'll talk about that one uh vcu oregon state a really good game um there were some other really good games on at the time so if you didn't get to catch that one it was a really good one i feel like i've missed more how many 7 10 matchups did i get right one two 
two. We're still at two. Three, four. I went four of eight on the stupid eight, nine, seven, ten matchups. Like, that is horrible. Like, what kind of hot garbage is that? <laughs> I missed four. I missed 11 games in the first round, which is horrible. I, I will say that. I was that horrible. That's horrible. How I'm as high up in the rankings on ESPN as I am is, is mind-blowing. Um, but four for ten. Oh my gosh, now I'm just thinking. I'm like, four for ten? Holy crap. Uh, but I never do good on those. Never. Um, Oregon State had its chances. They had they had a lot of chances. Uh, Jaquan Lewis played really well. Um, having 21 points and 8 assists. Gary Payton, the second. He had a pretty good game, but not as good as uh, usual. Uh, didn't have the assists that he usually has. Only scored 19. Um, it was a really good game. Oregon State dug themselves a big hole at halftime. And in those 7 10, 8 9 matchups, sometimes those can be a little hard to overcome, even though. I believe UConn did it to Colorado, Pittsburgh, or Wisconsin did it to Pittsburgh. There were some games, but you know what I mean. Um, when you're a little bit even in competition or you're not playing with, like, a chip on your shoulder, it's a little bit harder um, to come back from that. They did come back from it, and I believe they tied it for, they tied up 49-49 at one point, and then they kept they kept coming back and bringing it close, and then they would fall back behind, and it, it was just, it was rough for Oregon State, um, but it was a very good game to watch. Uh, the next really good game to watch was Hawaii and Cal. Uh, as you guys know, I had the upset of Hawaii beating Cal. It's up here. There we go. There's my boy, Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. I went, uh, I went seven for eight in this bracket, only missing the Iowa Temple game because Temple can't play any defense. Almost went perfect on that bracket. Is there another bracket that was that good? Uh, I went eight, for, or I went six for eight down here. Yeah, okay. Now there was some, uh, I, I was close to having it. For a while there, I had a perfect bracket other than the stupid Midwest region. Um, but Cal, um, Jalen Brown got in foul trouble. He really didn't even play that many minutes. Uh, let me go into the box score, and I'll tell you exactly how many minutes he played. Um... Actually, the college one doesn't tell you how many minutes people played. Good. Does it? No, it doesn't tell you how many minutes they played. Okay, well, his stats, he was only 1 for 6, 2 or 2 at the free throw line, 4 points, 2 rebounds, and that's it. And he fouled out. He played, I would assume he played maybe 15 minutes of the basketball game, maybe. Uh, but I knew it. Cal was inexperienced, and they weren't good. They weren't that good um, under pressure, and that they weren't, um, I didn't think they would perform to their talent level, and that's why I took Hawaii. Bobbitt played extremely well, so did Smith. Um, John Jankovic got into foul trouble, but it wasn't a big deal to guards, uh, which is the reason I picked Hawaii. I did not pick it because of Jankovic, who was their best player. I picked it because of the guards for Hawaii, and they came through uh, big time in that game. But Cal's foul tr that game was ticky-tack fouls all over the place, and no one adjusted. Everybody just kept fouling and fouling and fouling. It was just some ridiculous... Nothing will ever beat that game. Uh, Oregon State, or no, Oklahoma State and BYU, I believe. Was that, was that, or was it Gonzaga? It was one of those schools, either BYU or Gonzaga, where there was like 70-some plus fouls. That game took forever. It took like four hours, it felt like. That game was ridiculous. Um, all I remember is they gave that flagrant one to, oh, uh, who was it? The, the, the tall guy on that team, because he got hurt. And then he needed to get out, so he grabbed someone. They gave him like a, I think they gave him a flagrant one for that, or what? Did they give him a clear pass, something like that? Uh, but Hawaii and Cal, um, Hawaii comes out the 11 point win. It did get dicey there for a while for Hawaii, and then they finally pulled away. Um, uh, but it was it was a heck of a game. Um, the first half was pretty much all Hawaii, and then Cal closed it to end the half to a six point lead, and then they came out and played uh, pretty well for about the first. 12, 15 minutes of the second half, and uh, kept the bad boy close, but just couldn't pull away from Hawaii, and that's the worst case scenario when you're playing the, the, when you're playing these underdogs in the tournament, is letting them hang around and hang on uh, to something and be close. Um, so we'll move on now to Middle Tennessee State and Michigan State. I don't know why they call them Middle Tennessee, I guess because the state is too long, but I'm like, 
because they are Middle Tennessee State, and I feel like it is my job to tell everybody it's Middle Tennessee State, not Middle Tennessee, because it is. It's MTSU, Middle Tennessee State University. We all, you all need to figure that out and know that it's Middle Tennessee State, not Middle Tennessee. Why they're too stupid to put state on their jerseys or on their logo blows my mind. Is there not a regular Middle Tennessee? Is it just stupid that they are Middle Tennessee State? Like, I, I don't get it. But they are Middle Tennessee State. They've always been Middle Tennessee State since I started paying attention to them in, like, 10 years ago. Uh, but Michigan State, Denzel Valentine just couldn't do it by himself, and he couldn't score. He didn't have, I believe he had 13 points, uh, which just isn't enough. Um, and the other guards, uh, Forbes and Harris, had three assists combined. Valentine had 12. They had three assists combined, and their whole entire rest of the team had five total, which means Valentine had as a 60% of the assists for the team. Like, that's, that, that's crazy. Um, because, not saying that another person then should have that many assists, but the rest of the team should accumulate to have more assists than... Denzel Valentine by himself. Um, I don't really, I don't really know what to say about this game other than the fact that Middle Tennessee just wanted it more and outplayed Michigan State. Uh, Michigan State, known for their defense a lot of the time, gave up 90 points to a mid-major. There, there's just, I don't, I don't know. There's just not much I can say on this game. It, it's just, it's exactly what happened to uh, Missouri uh, in Norfolk State. Exactly what happened to Duke and Lehigh, because the, the the small schools they just keep scoring, and the big school yes they're scoring, but they're not playing defense, and that seemed to be the biggest issue yesterday for Michigan. Actually, it's obviously the biggest mistake when you give up 90 points, um, but they gave up 90 points and just did not play very good defense, and. Uh, there's not much to say about that game other than the fact that Michigan State didn't play defense and Middle Tennessee wanted to win the game more than Michigan State. Um, people like the upsets. I, I honestly, I do feel bad for the big schools where they're seniors, they've stuck around, they want to make one last tournament run, and and they get they get knocked off early in the tournament. I, I always hate that um, for them. And... Uh, I, I do like to watch upsets. Like, I did like to watch the Hawaii-Cal game because most of the players on Cal, the three big guys, Rab, Brown, and um, I forget his name. They're probably one and done. Uh, or they're draft picks. They're, they're coming out early there, I'll just say that, because I don't think all three of them are one and done. Uh, but they're coming out of the dra to the draft early. Um, so I feel much worse for Michigan State, I believe. Is it Costello? Uh, Valentine and Forbes, are they all seniors? There are three seniors on Michigan State, I think. Um, but let's move on from that game. We've got Temple, Iowa. Uh, Temple, you got to be kidding me. Uh, they get it to overtime, which was the most ridiculous thing ever, and then they play like crap in overtime, and then they, they don't box out, and they don't jump. If you watch that replay when War Woodbury knocks, er, uh, taps that shot in, there's, like, no one for Temple jumping off the floor. They just, like, stay stationary, and they just watch them and tip it in. It's so annoying. And it, it was just so it was so frustrating to watch because Temple, Dekozy got fouled on that three, and I thought for sure they carry that momentum in overtime. But then I also realized this happens to me way too often where the team that I want, you know, we take it in overtime, and then we do jackedly squat in overtime. Uh, Dekozy with 26 points. Uh, Utah with 23 to match to Cozy's, um, Bond with 15 rebounds, um, but Iowa gets the pullout win against Temple, and now I'm semi-worried tomorrow at 1240 when uh, Iowa takes on Villanova. Utah and Woodbury are going to be a, a handful for Ochefu uh, down low, and I would assume Chris Jenkins will probably be on uh, Utah. Uh, and Ochefu will be on Woodbury. That would be my biggest guess on who's going to be on who tomorrow because unless Villanova wants to start Jalen Reynolds and uh Ochefu which I highly doubt because then then their um their lineup would be jacked up because they want to start Archidiacono, Hart, um Jenkins and uh what's his face oh my gosh I can't remember his name 
But they want to start four guards. They usually start four guards. So I may am interested to see tomorrow who Villanova starts. Uh, next, we have Oklahoma, uh, Cal State, Bakersfield. Uh, was actually a pretty good game. Uh, and, and interesting enough, uh, Oklahoma scored 41 points in the first half and the second half. And Cal State, Bakersfield scored 34 points in both halves. Uh, Buddy Hill held in check for points of the game, but then exploded for 27. He just had points of the game where he just exploded for points. Um, and was able to to get it. Ahmed played pretty well, but he was in foul trouble uh, a bit, so he didn't get to play as much uh, and only ended up with 16 points. Uh, but Cal State Bakerfield, I was I was pretty impressed with how they uh, how they played. Uh, it was a very it's a very valiant effort from a 15 seed to try to take down another two in the in this year. Uh, they, they looked like they had a chance for a while, but Oklahoma held them at bay on uh, Woodard and. Cousins chipped in enough with Heald to get to get out of there with the W. Next is Maryland and South Dakota State. Hold on, let me take a drink. My throat was getting dry from talking. Uh, but Maryland, South Dakota State. Uh, Maryland thought they had the game won. They were up by, I believe they were up 18. Were they up 18 at one point? And uh, Mark Turgeon, well, because here came South Dakota State, and by the time he put everybody back in, it was a little too late, and uh, Mello Trimble then fouled out like an idiot. He got the stupidest fifth foul ever, and he fouled out of the game, and then they didn't have a point guard to handle the ball, and it just created all sorts of problems, but they escaped 79-74, saving my butt because... I need them to beat Hawaii tomorrow to advance to play Kansas. And if I would have lost Maryland, that would have been painful uh, for me. Uh, well, let's move on. We've got... Wow, we got eight more games to talk about. So I, I might split this up into two videos. Where are we looking at for time? Yeah, you know what? Let me split these up into two videos. We'll start next video by talking about Pitt and Wisconsin. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, the video. Um, and I'll catch you guys check back here in about an hour or two. And you'll uh, hopefully see uh, the next uh, tournament recap for day two. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys then. Peace out.